Image Incredibles of Swift. It's Prof G, and we're about to learn how to grab images over the internet using Swift UI's Async Image View. Let's learn big. So at the end of our last lesson, we set up our detail view, and we even got the URL that we're going to use to grab an image of a Pokemon over the internet. Now to actually grab that image, we're going to use Swift UI's Async Image View. And here's how it works. Now there are a few different forms of async image. Those that don't require any placeholder image, those that can report back a phase, for example, whether it's in the process of loading or if it reported an error, you might use the latter, for example, to display an image that says something like image not available. We'll get to the phase in a later lesson, but we're gonna start using the version with an image and a placeholder. That's the version that I'm showing here. It takes a URL, remember that's Apple special type, so if you have a URL in a string format, you need to convert that to the special URL type. That's what I'm doing here with the call to the capital URL string initializer. And then behind the scenes, Apple uses this to make a call to URL session. This URL just returns the official Swift UI icon. Now, since this might take some time, the placeholder that's down here, it can hold an image, a shape, or other view that you'd like to display while the URL session is waiting to get back the image data. So right here, I'm showing the system image with the name question mark dot square dot dashed. So this is the placeholder, and this is gonna be displayed as long as async image is waiting for data to come back. Now the first closure holds the final image that we get if the image is returned successfully. The closure returns a value just before this in keyword, so you could give your image view any valid name, but I think image is a pretty good name for an image view. And in either closure here, the one for the image or the one for the placeholder, you can put any modifiers that you'd like to apply to the respective image or placeholder. Now you might look at this and think, hey, we've got resizable and scale to fit in both the image and the placeholder. Can I just cut this out and put this down below async image where I've got the frame? And unfortunately, you can't do that. If you do, you'll get an error. But you can, for example, set an overall frame that you'd like to use, both for the placeholder and the returned image. That's what I've done here. And here's a super fast demo of the code that I just wrote in action. It's already displaying the loaded image, but when I press the live preview play button, it'll get the image again over the internet, and you'll super briefly see the question mark inside of the dashed square. There it is, placeholder first and very briefly shown, followed by the image that we get via async image once it's returned. So now that we know basically how this works, let's go ahead and code this up. So here I am in our detail view. So I'm gonna highlight all of this code that I used for the old image where I used to show the system image of a running person in a circle as a placeholder, and I'll comment that out with a command slash. Then above this, I'll enter async image and select the option with a URL content and placeholder. I'm not sure why the description isn't showing up here, but code completion should be saying, loads and displays a modifiable image for a specified URL using a custom placeholder until the image loads. So press return to accept this. And for the URL, I'm gonna need to create a URL from a string. I'll enter capital URL, open paren. And I'm gonna select the option to initialize a URL from a string. And the string that I'm gonna pass in will be creature detail lower camel case dot image URL. Now that's it. Behind the scenes, Swift UI will use this to make a call to URL session, and it'll send back the results as an image. So I'm going to tab over to the next field, and I'm going to press return, and this gives me the trailing closure formats. And in the first closure, I have an image view passed into it. Now I need to give this image view a name, and I'll just call it lowercase image. Then I'll delete the code that's below this, and also delete the code in the closure below. And now if I reference lowercase image in my first closure, that's my returned image. It's already an image view. So that's the full view that we can set to resizable and dot scale to fit, not just the URL of the image. So if I type in lowercase image, and holy squirtles, Professor Oak, will you look at that? We get a Bulbasaur in the live preview. Nice. Then I can select all of the modifiers that I was using down here in the system image below when I was getting my layout setup image. I'm going to copy those. I'm going to paste them below my lowercase i image. Then I'm going to highlight those modifiers again. I'm going to command slash to remove the comments and I'll control i to fix the indentation. And our image has a nice rounded quarter frame with a shadow. Now what about our placeholder? Now that image with the dash rectangle and the question mark that I showed earlier is a great placeholder if an image isn't available so we don't have anything to display. We're going to save that for a future lesson because we're going to see that case show up. But right now I'm going to show you that we don't even need to have an image. I'm going to put a shape in here that's a clear shape and it just takes up space until the image loads. So I'm going to start with a rounded rectangle or although it could be a regular rectangle since you're not going to be able to see it. I'll set the quarter radius to 10 and I'll set dot foreground style to dot clear. That makes it transparent and I'll set a frame to width and height of 96 each and you're gonna see it flash really quickly but it looks fine so that little flash that you see in there is actually our placeholder image that showed up just before the image load while we were waiting for the async image to load press the live preview in here and you see a little jump again sometimes the load happens so fast you don't even see it 
And the reason why we see the height and the weight to the right jump is because we don't have any padding below in the placeholder. So I'll highlight and copy the padding from the image and paste it below the rounded rect in the placeholder. If I tap live preview, that's much smoother. Height and weight no longer jump. Now you can put all sorts of things in the placeholder. You can even put in a progress view. We're gonna learn about those in a future lesson. So the progress views are like the spinny circle that just says, you know, we're waiting for a task to complete. Now I don't wanna put a placeholder image in here yet. I'm gonna save that for if we don't load an image. But just to show you that I could add a placeholder image, I'm gonna highlight in command slash to comment out rounded rect and the foreground color clear. Then I'll enter image system name and I'm gonna pass in the string question mark dot square dot dashed. I'll add dot resizable and dot scale to fit. And now you can see as the image reloads very briefly, we get that dashed question mark in there. Cool. I'm gonna use that later though. So I'm gonna highlight image down through scale to fit and delete that and then uncomment my rounded rect and foreground style dot clear. And as I mentioned, we can apply the frame and we can also apply the padding outside of the async image closing curly at the end for the placeholder. And that'll apply to both the image up top and the placeholder. So I'm gonna cut this out, paste it below the closing curly of the placeholder. Then in my first image up here, I can delete my padding and my frame. It just saves me a couple lines of code and it makes my code more consistent so I can make changes in one place instead of two. And I no longer need this old image code down here that I commented out, so I'll highlight and delete that. And let's head back over to Creatures List View and see how things are looking. And let's click on each of these guys. Bulbasaur, looking good. Ivysaur, a little bigger. Venusaur, biggest yet. We can also go through Squirtle and Wartortle and Blastoise. And all the way to the bottom, we got Raticate. So swift trainer, that's another awesome skill. Async image, loading images over the internet. We're gonna riz up this image in a future lesson, but in our next lesson, we're gonna learn how to load page after page of Pokemon as we scroll. Page JSON access is coming up, trainer. Keep hacking.